As you can see, I made a new intro out of the opening in my 1933 King Kong review, and I'm now calling this new subseries D3 Media Presents Movie Monster Mania, which any movie I review that contains a movie monster in it falls under this category. And what better way to kick this series off than with more King Kong reviews? So today we're going to be talking about the 1976 remake of King Kong. Now, many people write this movie off as just being a dumb remake of one of the most iconic movies of all time, and in many ways it is, but... I honestly think it is kind of underrated and does do some really great things that make it a good movie. Now, to be clear, nothing will ever top the original, and when you compare it to the original 1933 version, it isn't that great. It really is not. But on its own, I still think that it is a pretty good movie. So let's dig into it, and be aware, spoilers do lie ahead. Now this movie does something a little bit different with the King Kong story, which I actually kind of like. Is they modernize it and they give a different spin to it. Now overall it follows the same kind of arc but we'll go into it a little bit. Instead of a movie company going to Skull Island to film a movie it's an oil company looking for oil along with a stowaway named Jack who's a paleontologist played by Jeff Bridges who's going to the island to research Kong. They also find a castaway named Dwan played by Jessica Lange who's just with them because well they found her floating in a raft in the middle of the ocean. What are the odds? Anyway, they go to the island, find natives, the natives capture Dwan and sacrifice her to Kong, and the movie kind of plays out like you would think it would. They go to rescue Dwan and everything, and they eventually bring King Kong back to civilization, where he's put on display, and eventually he uh, breaks loose and messes a bunch of shit up in the city. Now let's get over some of the things that I didn't like on the movie really quickly. For instance, there's no dinosaurs on the island. There really aren't any creatures on the island other than Kong and a giant snake, which is pretty boring actually like one of the best parts of the original 1933 King Kong was that there was so much stuff on that island there were so many creatures that you could see and with the special effects that they did with this movie it's really disappointing that they didn't do more creatures with it this movie feels like it tried to ground itself in reality a little bit more also some of the characters aren't as interesting as the original one and I know the dialogue in the original 1933 one can come off as hokey and everything and the characters in this one, though, just aren't as, I think, lovable. I don't know, there's something about them. You know what they remind me of? They remind me of a characters out of a Michael Crichton novel. You know how Crichton can't, like, write a likable character to save his life in any of his stories? This is what that feels like. But for the good things in this movie, I think the special effects are great in this movie, and I really think that that is the most underrated part of this movie. Kong looks great. It was done by the same guy who did Harry and Harry and the Hendersons, and the range of expression that they get out of this animatronic monkey is great. They use a lot of the same tactics that they did in the original Godzilla movie with just, you know, miniature sets and a person in a gorilla suit, and it really looks great. This movie has aged surprisingly well in the special effects department. Are they as groundbreaking as the original? No, but I still think that they are amazing effects. I still love looking at the scene where King Kong tears apart the subway in New York and everything. I, I just think it's great, which is why I was disappointed that they didn't do more creatures in this movie. Everybody puts on a good performance in this movie, too. I really can't think of anybody who gives a bad performance. One thing, though, is that the blood in this movie goes really over the top. Like, when Kong gets shot down off of the World Trade Center, man, is it brutal, and it's kind of unnecessarily brutal. It is it's pretty bad. Overall, guys, I think that this is a competent remake. Is it as good as the original 1933 movie? Absolutely not. You're never going to come close to recapturing that. But as far as a good remake goes, I think it's okay. And on its own, I think it does all right. And I think that it is underrated and unfortunately forgotten. So that's it for me, guys. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. Uh, be sure to look out for my King Kong 2005 review. That's going to be up soon, as well as my review of Kong Skull Island. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.